Today we're going to be discussing section 1.2, order of operations and evaluating expressions. But before we get to the notes, make sure you have done the lesson check for section 1.1. Okay, so for section 1.2, we're going to define our terms again. The first term that we're going to talk about is power. The power is the base and the exponent of an expression in the form a to the n. You can see to the right, the power would be the whole thing, 2 to the third. That is the power. The second term we're going to talk about is exponent. And the exponent is the little number in the top right corner. And that's the number that shows the repeated multiplication. So how many times that big number is multiplied by itself. That's what an exponent is. And the base, or it actually is the base, the big number in the bottom is called the base. And that is the number that is multiplied over and over again or repeatedly. And one word that we're going to be using a lot throughout the whole year is the word simplify. Simplify means replacing an expression with its simplest form. Another word for simplify is reduce. So let's take a look at the first example. We're going to be simplifying powers. So in part A, we have 10 to the 7th. Remember, 10 is the base, 7 is the exponent, so what we're going to do is multiply 10 by itself 7 times. And instead of just plugging into your calculator, here's a little trick. How many 10s are there there? There's seven, so that means there's going to be seven zeros in the answer. So you write a one and then seven zeros. And that's it for part A. In part B, similarly, we're going to be multiplying 0 0.2 to the fifth. So that means we are multiplying 0 0.2 times itself five times. And feel free to put that one into your calculator. And you get 0 0.00032. And that's it for example one. Now we're going to look at the order of operations. I'm sure you have heard of the order of operations for several years now. So hopefully you remember the saying, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. P stands for parentheses, E stands for exponents, M stands for multiply, D divide, A add, and S subtract. So you want to make sure you fill in that little box on your notes with those words. And we're going to be using the order operation starting in example two and all the way to the end of the year. We always want to remember order operations. So let's take a look at example A. It says we need to simplify the expression. Well, are there any parentheses there? Yes. So let's do what's inside the parentheses first. 6 minus 2 is 4. So we have 4 to the third divided by 2. Now, do we have any exponents? I see one. The 3 is an exponent, so we're going to figure out what 4 to the third is. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. So replace that by 64 divided by 2, and there's only one step left, 64 divided by 2 is 32. So that's the answer. Now in part B, we do not have any parentheses, but we do have a fraction. We need to simplify the top and the bottom of the fraction, and then divide. That'll be our last step. So I see an exponent, 2 to the 4th is 16, so we're going to replace that by 16 minus 1 over 5. We need to simplify the top of the fraction. 16 minus 1 is 15. And we need to divide 15 by 5, and you get 3. So that's it for example 2, part B. Yeah. 
Another term besides simplifying is the word evaluate, and that's our first blank here. Evaluating just means we're replacing the variable by a number, and we're always given what number that is, and then we have to simplify. So in example three, we are evaluating each of the expressions. We are told that x equals five and y equals two. So we need to plug in five wherever we see an x, and two whenever we see a y. Five squared is 25. Bring everything else down. And two squared is four. Now we need to use order operations. Division comes before addition and, and subtraction, so we're going to divide. 12 divided by four is three. And bring everything else down. Okay, 25 plus 5 is 30, and 30 minus 3 is 27. That's our answer. In part B, we have another expression, but this time the x and the y values are the exact same, so we're going to replace x by 5 and y by 2. Five times two is 10. So we have 10 squared divided by 10, and 10 squared is 100. 100 divided by 10 is 10. And in example four, we have a real world application problem. So it says, what is an expression for the spending money you have left after depositing two-fifths of your wages and savings? Evaluate the expression for weekly wages of $40, $50, $75, and $100. So first of all, let's define our variable. We're going to say that W equals wages. Remember, wages is just the amount of money that you're making for your job. So first, let's come up with an expression. Well, it says here that you're depositing two-fifths of your wages in savings. So that means you're taking them away from your original wages. So we're going to have wages minus two-fifths of wages. Okay, so W is wages, minus means subtraction, two-fifths of, of means multiplication, and that W right there. So we have W minus two-fifths W. And you can see we're using that in the table right there. So now we just need to simply plug in the values at the left, these values right here. That's what we're going to do. So now we have 40 minus 2 fifths times 40, and that equals 24, and you can do that by simply plugging them into the calculator. 50 minus 2 fifths, 50, and that equals 30. Plugging in 75 now, 75 minus 2 fifths, 75, and that equals 45. And the last 100's going in, 100 minus 2 fifths times 100, and that equals 60. And that's it for this lesson. So make sure you have all these notes and the lesson check from the previous section, and you can wait on doing 1.2 lesson check until we do it during class. All right, bye.